everyone and welcome back to Do We Know Them? We've made it to episode 185, which just really feels like a great solid number. Right? Big milestone. I mean, we are just moving mountains on this show. Making cheers? big changes. Cheers. Why not? <laughs> I feel like we have stuff to cheers. We can't share it yet, but we do. And uh, spooky shirt of the day is just uh, very anticlimactic. I feel like he got way more inventive with it. Mine is just a stay spooky shirt, a skeleton trick or treating, some pumpkins. My daughter really liked it, but uh, you know. I'm sure it's nice. I <laughs> can't see it so it's really cheap actually it feels like shit but yeah period are you able to see the one i'm wearing <laughs> i think you sent me a picture of this actually i did i did this was the one i was excited about yeah. i liked the girls uh what was the the one with the witches girls, the girls will be witches or something like that it was girls will be girls i think i also got this one and i'm not gonna lie the fit not a fan okay period and i think it was one of the ones off i bought these shirts off timu you guys don't I don't recommend. Stop admitting do that. It. Keep that in your, you know, like the waterboarding. I need to because I need you guys to shame me to never do it again because Period. literally it took me a fucking hour to buy them because it just kept being spinning the wheel. You've won another free $10. Oh my God. Take my money. Let me have the shirt. I don't want to play any more games. And if you, God forbid you leave the notifications on, they are going to notify you. I'll just say that. Oh, I did. And they do. Anyway, I did like this one though. It popped up. It must have hacked my information and listened to the things I like mm -hmm. because it is a skull drinking Dr. Pepper and it just says till death. That is truly lily coated. Love that. Oh my God, I need to show you something. No, what? I'm scared. No, it's another really just a nod to how great Timu is. Oh, uh, okay. Hold, please. Lily's gone and I'm holding. You guys don't get to see this part, but I do. Okay. Is come it a back. small item? <laughs> I can't see. I was expecting you to come back with like a big thing. Are you ready to see one of the other shirts I bought? Oh, yes. Wait a second. What am I looking at? Well, I'm going to bring it closer. What is that? Why is it so small? Because it's a decal that you iron on to a shirt. Oh, no. Got to read those descriptions, girlfriend. Got to read them. <laughs> Why the fuck is Timu selling Halloween Town decals? I, it was supposed to be on a sweatshirt. I mean, do you have an iron? <laughs> we can we can make it work. I actually did just buy a three-in-one steamer iron, um, you know? I feel like the steamer but, might um, fuck it up. But if it's just an iron, you could probably do that. Well, first of all, I was like, didn't I get more than this? <laughs> and then all of a sudden this fell out. And I was like... You know what it kidding. is? Timu gets real zesty, inventive with it. They're really trying to, you know, do a bunch of shit, cover a bunch of bases. Shein is horrible. Okay, don't buy from them. But I'm just saying, if you they think you're buying this. a shirt, you'll probably end up with a shirt. Like, Shein gets a little inventive, but Timu really thinks of they're like reinventing the wheel. Is Timu the one that sold the croissant lamp? Yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I guess they sell more products. Shein is just clothes. No, Shein does furniture, makeup. Oh, my bad. <laughs> anyway, so I won't be wearing a halloween town sweatshirt but are you gonna just throw I it away what i thought at least press it onto something for max make it work girl come on i was so annoyed because that was one i was like actually excited for did you know i went to halloween town to halloween town the fictional yeah. place is it a real place well I, it's called helen's some it's not called halloween town but yes it's a real place and i went oh my god and they have it all set up still like the big the pumpkin square. oh yeah. my god i have to go what the fuck i have a picture in front of the taxi and the sign I'll i think it was last weekend i was actually uh just watching halloween town classic love it it was on the road trip where i um took the wrong person's suitcase it was one of my favorite trips ever it was just like a little fun road trip when we went to all these places and i had a great time amazing and halloween town was a little anticlimactic not gonna lie oh but um it's so pretty there i have a vlog by the way, oh. of it, if you want to go see it. No one else watched it. It bombed. And that's pretty much when I stopped uploading on my channel. Oh, but, no. You know, it's still there. Not it being the it death of your channel. It was a three-part series. Okay, period. Um, okay, well, shall we dive in? Because we have quite a lot to cover, Girly Pop. I didn't know we had a lot. Well, because we have two separate... Okay, wait. Do you want to start first before I start summarizing the topics? Do you want to start with the influencers flying to Disney World despite Hurricane Milton? Or do you want to start with uh, the... What's the other one called? One Night Stand Tries Ruining Man's Life, allegedly. I know about that one. So let me um, be a listener for the first one. Okay. Hurricane Milton. Go ahead, leader her? Jessica Urban. Okay. <laughs> I'm blocking you. So... Hurricane Milton. Heard of her? Y yes. I actually was just watching traumatizing videos about alligators 
being in the water, like people opening their doors and there's fucking alligators in their living rooms. And I just, I can't take it. If you guys don't know, Hurricane Milton is the hurricane that followed directly after Hurricane Helene. And we did talk about Hurricane Helene, did we not? Yeah, because the lady that wanted her um, refund for the Jesus. vacation. Of thing. course, how could I forget? No, but this one, I don't feel like anyone didn't hear about. Like I was on TikTok and that's all my with that one song that's it's so terrifying. daunting and it's like i hear the train it coming <laughs> i hate it i hate it i'm like i would love it in a movie but not in real life i literally could not stop singing that last night and then amelie started singing and she's like i hear the train it coming like we just between that and then the beyonce conspiracies playing she knows those are the only two songs that have been stuck in my head oh. all week okay well hurricane milton i have to admit i did know it was coming i didn't and i know there's another hurricane coming because as soon as hurricane right, helene yeah, yeah. came everything that i watched watched was like and then also these two that were storms at the time tropical depressions tropical storms whatever you want to call them there was a lot of talks in my opinion from what i had seen about two storms following up and it turns out right after hurricane helene followed hurricane milton who is a category bitch. five category five allegedly i think he landed at a category three right it fluctuated it was like a tropical storm and then it was category like four suddenly and then it was category five yeah. then i think it dropped back down to four and then they were like shit this is gonna like literally i think it was the mayor of tampa said if you are in one of the evacuation zones where we have told you to mandatory evacuate, you are going to die. Yeah. They were telling people to write their names and numbers In and Sharpie next of kins with Sharpie on their arm just to be able to yeah. identify them. Now, one thing you need to know is... Tampa has never directly gotten hit by a hurricane or hasn't in a very, very, right. very long time. And so Milton was supposed to be the first to do that in forever. And so that was why it was so scary for Tampa because it was going to be the biggest devastation they've ever seen. But then also, and I didn't even know what a storm surge were. I still don't fully understand what it is but Same, the storm honestly. surge from helene was the problem for the last hurricane it wasn't even that the hurricane itself hit tampa it was that it hit north and then the storm surge where it's i guess like all of the water gets sucked up and then like just dumped back down and it just like is flash floods basically the even more dangerous part about this was that because of that all of these people had their ruined furniture and stuff all just lining the streets and then they're getting told that Surprise, there's going to be this fucking Category 5 hurricane where 150 mile an hour winds are going to come and all of those are going to become projectiles that are just like flying fucking everywhere. And they anticipated a 15 foot storm surge. Yeah. So like 15 feet of water. Just insanity. Now, I will say Orlando is not Tampa. Tampa is directly on the coast and obviously more at risk. Orlando is further inland. It still was heavily at risk because it was going to be fully engulfed by the hurricane and it was in the end, but it still is not a place... I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Not a place I would want to go to Disney during okay. when there's well, a so hurricane. Well, so like, I get Florida in general always kind of blows my mind. I guess this is stupid because California is the same way. But like, it's so big. It feels like it's like multiple states. You can live in one part of Florida and it's like. It takes you like nine hours to get across it. Yeah. Just lengthwise. Exactly. So. Yeah. In general, I feel like if this like category five, like the people were literally like, there was a meteorologist that was crying on the news talking about that. it. Like, yeah. this was like going to be one of the most catastrophic things of all time i would probably just avoid florida altogether you know i wrote it out through hurricane katrina in miami and it was awful and our sliding glass doors i've never seen glass bend like that because it was bending behind the shutters and it was literally just like it was oh my god awful the whistling you would think a whistling is just tornadoes but the wind hits the shutters and whistles as well it's very very scary and we were without power for like a week during hurricane katrina that's what's scary too yeah floridians are used to it and i think that normally it's kind of just like okay another hurricane this seemed very different but Furthermore, beyond all of that, okay, a lot of scary shit that happens around a hurricane. And if you guys were in Tampa or just in Florida in general, St. Petersburg especially got hit okay so hard. Yeah, I just, my God, I can't even imagine what that was like to live through, let alone just like it's go outside and just see the fucking wreckage. So seriously, I hope yeah. you guys are all okay if you're in Florida. One last thing is... I know that I saw, I was literally on TikTok for like literally hours the other night and that's all I was watching. I did see people that like were very much like, we don't have anywhere to go. Like they're telling us to evacuate, but it's like they either didn't have the means, they like couldn't afford gas to get somewhere. The places they needed to go or could go, it was too far. And then the roads were a fucking mess. And then they were like, literally gas stations didn't have gas. It was all just a huge mess. But there was a lot of people that 
were kind of like in this like state of desperation where they like didn't know what to do and they couldn't leave. And that's what pisses me off about this even more. Because meanwhile, you have some people that are like, oh, let's go there. Now, there's two different extremes, okay? So the people that we're gonna be talking about are Mama Jill, which is an overall very beloved character online. I don't know if you know anything about Mama Jill, but Mama Jill has shared her weight loss journey and she has just been someone that feels to the people that are watching her as super authentic. She just shows like things she's cooking, her struggles, stuff like that. She doesn't really show her kids online. I don't think now ever. She's someone that people really like is my point. And then polar opposite <laughs> is Cecily and Samantha Bachman, Bachman, Bachman. Bachman. I mean, I, I'm so, apologies, but I do not know how to say that last name. There are two extremes here. There's one that potentially didn't know or chose to not know what was coming and went to Disney anyway. And there is one that absolutely knew and went anyway. So first we're going to start with Mama Jill, who again, beloved on the internet. Everyone was pretty shocked by this. They were kind of appalled by the fact that this happened in the first place because she seems like someone that's in touch and understands and has empathy. And she's not like that like influencer that you would think would be like, fuck you guys, I'm going to Disney World. Like that's not her vibe at all. So we'll just start with her initial video where she was announcing that she was taking her family to Disney World. So that's before it really was known that it was going to be like this catastrophic thing. So this video was on October 3rd. They started traveling on October 4th. And by October 5th, we already knew that Milton was forecasted to be a category three. So it did happen very quickly. And it is maybe plausible that she didn't know, but let's just go on this journey and figure it out. Y'all know I was supposed to get my loose skin removal just a couple weeks ago and it got canceled. I was getting two procedures and I decided that I will just wait until I'm done having kids and wait until it's less of a risk for me to have my procedure. I had already fully paid for both my procedures nine months ago. Obviously I didn't have them. I thought instead of getting those procedures done, we should do something my kids would think is a little more fun. We're going to Disney. Kids do not know, they will not know until we're getting on the freaking plane. We have never flown, never gone to Disney. We have no idea what we're doing. So give me all your tips and tricks. I need all the info. 16 year old pregnant me thought I would never get to take my kids to Disney World. So this is such a full circle moment. People were super supportive in the comments. You know, in general, people see her as a great mom and someone that's very loving. So nobody from what I found in the comments was like, what the fuck? It was still considered a tropical storm, I think at the time. So she talks about that a little bit, but at the time that she left, like her home, it was a uh -huh. tropical storm. Do yeah. I think personally that I would want to go to Disney during a tropical storm? No. It doesn't sound appealing, no. <laughs> At all. Even like, I feel like I'm someone that is going to check the weather regardless. Like if I'm going with my kids, I want to know what to fucking expect. If it's going to be rainy. Well, it's especially gonna be a... for Disney. Yeah, it's just going to be horrible. So she knew it was going to be a tropical storm. This is her packing for Disney. And she talks about how it's supposed to rain because she's like packing rain ponchos. <laughs> so it's like she knew it was going to rain. She checked the weather. We are going to Disney World for the first time. And I ordered a whole bunch of things I saw on TikTok that are supposed to make our trip easier. So I'm gonna show you guys some of the things I got. These are blister band-aids. These are supposed to be good to keep in your stroller. I got both my kids new sunglasses. I got all of us ponchos. I think I got us all two each because it's supposed to rain. Disney ponchos are like $30 a piece. So. It's supposed to rain is an understatement. <laughs> supposed to tropical depress on everyone um, well <laughs> how old are her kids they're young uh i think they're honestly around my kids age like maybe one is younger and then one's like five or something probably like, younger i will that. say i have been to disneyland one time when it was raining it wasn't like pouring it was sprinkling it rains always at disney in florida in general. Oh, well, I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> but <laughs> I was gonna say, it actually ended up being a lovely time because like no one was there because it was raining. But it doesn't rain in Anaheim that much. So that was a different scenario. That makes a little more sense. I was gonna say, why would you want your kids first time at Disney to be when it was raining, especially if they're in little? In Florida, it's like, it could rain. Like there's been a billion times I've been at Disney and it'll rain for like 30 minutes and then it'll stop for the rest of the day. That's Florida. So yeah. I don't think that it raining. Yeah, and it's, it's hot anyway. So it's weird. not like you're like, cold. Yeah. yeah. Now they did book this through a travel agent. And the reason why I mentioned this is because obviously they paid a little bit extra for that feature to have a travel agent book it for them. But everything that we're about to learn is kind of just giving she didn't want to lose out on the money from the vacation. Like you're almost there. You're you've told your kids already you're at the airport, which is when they found out, spoiler alert, we're going to find that out right now. That's when they found out that this was going to be a hurricane. They found this out 
literally as they were going to board their plane. So I think that there is going to be a divided group. There's going to be some people that say, absolutely, I would have turned around. I think I would have been in that camp. However, I literally think I know people that would have been like, I already paid. So like, I'm going, you know what I mean? And I just think that it's... Well it's split. It's when it got announced that it was a category three when they were at the airport, but then geographically challenged girly over here. So would that have been like, oh, but that's not going to hit Orlando? No, no, no. Look at the map. <laughs> it was definitely going to hit Orlando. Orlando's like right here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. just just trying to see if there was like a oh well i mean like we'll be fine though no, no. like the no. entire okay. state of florida was like Fuck i you. mean that's that what i said earlier Hamilton. i don't know why you would want to go where are they coming from kentucky oh so they're literally like coming weird choice too. yeah right yeah and i get it you planned it already i understand not wanting to lose that i do think that traveling with two kids it just seems like why would i want to be there during a tropical storm with my kids in a hotel now it is notable that disney has only closed their doors for a natural disaster like four or five times ever in history so it was likely that regardless of there being a tropical storm disney itself would have been open to them which i actually saw from a different unrelated perspective that um people were saying that how dare you go to something like this because the people have to work the thing is with that that, though is like you can be like okay well one person isn't going to make a difference but like if everybody had the same mentality of like we're absolutely not going then obviously it would make a difference and there's power in numbers so i don't know what side i'm on there this first time i've ever hearing anything about this woman so i don't know anything about her it does seem and even this time with hurricane milton that it seems like a lot of the time it's like there's a huge hurricane coming and then last minute like kind of veers off and it's not as bad maybe she was hoping for that but it did it didn't make sense in this situation mm. only I because it was engulfing the entire state of florida yeah no i i agree i'm just i'm just trying to find something that maybe she no, thought no. And, it and, and spoiler could... alert it did move south uh not spoiler alert it literally already happened like you should probably already yeah. know that but like it did move south just a bit enough to spare tampa absolutely ream st petersburg sarasota area just absolutely devastating but it did move south last second however it never changed what it was gonna do to orlando because yeah. orlando's further inland so they weren't concerned that there was going to be like water pouring in through the hotels it was just this is going to be a fucking hurricane we're going to have to withstand yeah. you know what i mean like and in florida everything's made out of concrete you're probably going to be fine especially if you're inland and you don't have to worry about storm surge but you're in fucking disney during a hurricane like it, it's gonna it be seems like a, a not horrible fun time idea. yeah yeah it's just not gonna it. be yeah. fun with toddlers and shit anyway this tiktok is where people started kind of like forming a timeline of like oh so you did know like you knew before you came here. This is her and her husband, Brandon. Disney day one fit. My Mickey Pandora necklace is from Brandon Pandora. I think that's the cutest necklace. And my shirt, I got on clearance for like $8 at Airpostle. Magic Band is from Disney. And yeah, um, it is raining all day today and there's supposed to be a freaking hurricane on Wednesday. Bro, and the funniest thing about it is Funny. there was no talk about a hurricane at all. No. Nope. And then right before we got on the plane to come here, that's whenever I started seeing stuff. So. so. They knew we were coming. I guess we did bring... First of all, not that funny. <laughs> I was like, nah, I don't not, not funny ha -ha. I have to admit, funny weird this gave to me that it's like okay like i get it you live in kentucky maybe you're not watching the same things but like i in georgia because obviously i was following with hurricane helene it was supposed to hit us directly whatever blah 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 i already knew about the following hurricane from that moment they were talking about it they were like and then after we're gonna get fucking basically reamed again and it wasn't us it was florida but like we knew that I'm those in were california stirring. and i was like <laughs> Right? Yeah, like I feel, and I don't want to sound like pretentious about it. It may be possible that they didn't know until they boarded their flight. But I do feel like the majority of people, if you even so much as checked the weather, which like, how can you not with hurricanes? I feel like even if it's not hitting me, I want to know what's happening. I watch the radars and shit. And she's posting on TikTok and stuff. I mean, like I get sometimes like I'll post on Twitter and not actually be on Twitter, but like it was everywhere. Yeah. Someone literally says, I live in California and heard Milton was coming back to back from Helene. Yeah. This is insane. And we've been talking about this hurricane since Helene. People from that point on were just like, okay. What do you mean you didn't know? Like you're acting like it just like was sprung up on you. People did know since before Helene even hit that there was something stirring in the fucking ocean. I get it. You didn't want to lose the vacation money, but you landed yourself during a category three or four hurricane in Florida with your kids because of that. Did they go and it's- Oh, they hurricane? absolutely went. Yeah. Because that's enough. I was like, maybe they were like, 
we'll go and if it's hurricaning we'll stay in the hotel room no well so they have to stay in the hotel room because disney closed oh <laughs> yeah disney absolutely closed their doors and Not they were funny, like no like, this is gonna be so crazy. this was like the fifth or sixth time they've ever closed <laughs> literally yeah this was one of the monumental times that they've closed because it was gonna be so bad it was projected to be so bad she did a number of tiktoks and we'll get into a few more of them but she did a lot of tiktoks just being like i'm from kentucky like obviously i didn't hear about what was going on i'm from the midwest like we didn't know what we were getting into and branded it as that versus just like we chose to go during a tropical storm at the very least and by her own husband's admission we yeah, chose to go during a hurricane they... right before the flight now yeah. get it i get it you're at the airport right it feels like binding you've been through security or whatever to yeah. turn around is kind of insane but they did have the option you kind of have to point that out where it's just like you guys could have not gone i mean what fun are you gonna have at fucking disney when there's a hurricane so anyway then they got notice right you hear the all the songs ah here the train coming like all those fucking tiktoks oh, that are just showing it. people lieutenant dan on his boat it was just a fucking disaster it was He's just okay. in shambles but then when all that news started and like all the kind of sensationalism of everything and everyone just be, i mean everyone being rightfully scared it was gonna be really every bad. single person i saw from florida was like this feels different this feels different yeah it felt like ominous it was really really scary then she tried to start getting the fuck out of there she was like you know what actually maybe not disney maybe no more hurricane milton update we are in Orlando for the first time ever. By the way, guys, in my last video, I said the one time there's a hurricane. I meant the one time we're here, there's a hurricane. I, I didn't mean the one time there's hanging. a hurricane. There's literally was just a hurricane, okay? Anyway, um, we are staying here, and that is not by choice. I tried to book a flight, not a single flight. Talking. Not a single one that I could get. Uh, even for thousands of dollars, there's not one. We do not have a car here. We flew, okay? We live like, I don't even know, 14 hours away, 15, I, I'm not sure. But we talked to the Disney staff and they said that this is like one of the best places to be during a hurricane. A bunch of people actually come to Disney during hurricanes because of how well they treat you and they make sure that you have water and food and that. So basically this portion is what made people really upset because something that is notable is that it is a life-saving measure during a hurricane where there is an expected storm surge of 10, 15 feet like we discussed in Tampa. It is life-saving to move inland to a place like Orlando. Like you booking a Disney resort just because that was like the only place available because trust, all of these hotels were booked and busy. Okay, like literally you could not find a hotel. That could have saved your life. That's what I was saying earlier is that I was seeing people that were like, we can't afford to go anywhere or there's nowhere, like we have money and we can't go anywhere can't go because anywhere. everything's booked. The roads are backed up. Only Airbnbs are available and they're charging a fucking, they're like price gouging for them it really makes you feel super desperate i remember noah was like two weeks old when we fled hurricane irene i want to say it was the name of it i don't remember but we came to georgia to visit my brother to just get away from the hurricane and luckily the worst that happened was like our fence was broken and we lost power but it could be so much worse than that and in the moment like we literally drove 19 hours which it should have been far less of a trip because there is no gas everybody's at a standstill it was such a fucking nightmare but like you just feel like you have to do it so yeah yeah, people are willing if you have the money you're willing to spend it if you don't have the money you're just looking for shelters inland like it means a lot to take up a spot in a hotel like it does mean a lot when it comes down to survival i saw another guy that was saying that they like did find a place basically they were like trying to kick them out after like a couple days and it would be like mid hurricane and that people were like sliding them hundreds and like getting to stay later and stuff and it, it's Jesus. all just like a fucking disgusting it's a free for all and it feels really yeah. Really, really scary so people were pointing that out and just being like yeah disney's great to you people know that other people could have used that room type of thing you've never even had to be here and i understand again if she stands by and like they're just like we didn't know i don't know i just i i feel kind of conflicted about it because i'm just like i know why they went obviously like they just yeah. didn't they knew they when wouldn't she said get they've, a refund they've never i don't know if it was just the kids or her too that they'd never been on a flight never before been. and that it's just like well we're already here though so yeah, they, they probably felt, felt like, like tied a, to it in a way yeah. that they obviously now probably regret and then probably just like we're praying that it wasn't going to be that bad and they were just going to be able to enjoy it anyway yeah what makes me a little bit iffy is that even after people pointed out instead of just being like oh man i fucked up it's kind of like doubling down of just like i didn't fucking know like what do you want from me and that is a little bit icky to me we'll get to that in a second but anyway i just feel like why are all their guests are taken care of stop posting. They have generators all that kind of stuff so not to be worried 
Am I still so worried? Yeah, I am. Okay, and I'm seeing stuff about tornadoes. I'm freaked out, and that's why I was trying to leave, and now I'm like, I guess we're just going to make do with what we can um, because I, I seriously just don't know what to do. Also, when it comes to driving, every single video I've seen is like somebody said they moved just a few miles within five and a half hours. That's how bad it is. And can you imagine being stuck in your car? during it too like I and, and I don't even have a car it just yeah so anyway there's my update um I'm scared but the people at Disney have reassured me that it should be okay so I guess they should be home honestly why is it, why does anybody have no. to work during this it's so inhumane well now is this post I saw from someone else it's like hey um you going to Disney hoping I don't know if it was about this but it was just like, what about all the people that have to work there that aren't like able to like fucking go make sure they're, I mean, Orlando, how far is it from Tampa? Mm, an hour and a half ish. So people could technically like be at least family could be nearby that they are wanting to help or they need to go yeah. like hurricane proof their place and they can't because they are having to work because they need right. money. She does have a lot of TikToks where she talks about this. She answers comments and stuff. She keeps reiterating there was no talk of a hurricane before she came. It just, it wasn't a thing. And then she started saying people are traveling to Orlando to get away from the storm. So that like makes her feel better. And it's like, okay, well, <laughs> you could have left them a room. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, well, um, are they going to have a room when they get there? But before we continue, we really quickly want to thank today's sponsor. And that's OneSkin. OneSkin is one of our favorite sponsors because they um, keep our faces all moisturized and youthful. It's a skincare line and they have um, a face cream, an eye cream. They have one for your body. They also have sunscreen, all of which I use every day. And the secret to One Skin is their OS01 peptide, which really helps with those fine lines and wrinkles. And you're really gonna notice it over time. We've said this before and we'll say it again. We have used One Skin for like, I don't know, over six months at least now. And I just feel like it's something that you have to give it some time, but you're definitely gonna see results with. And my favorite is just the face cream. I feel like it's super lightweight. It doesn't leave you all like sticky or it doesn't feel like you have like a thick layer on afterwards that you like claw off. No, it sinks right in. It makes me feel moisturized and then I kind of just forget it's on. Also, my favorite is the sunscreen, which I've been wearing a lot lately, which also helps my skin because I wasn't ever wearing it before. So if you guys want to try out One Skin for yourself, you can head over to oneskin.co and use our code DWKT to get 15% off. That's 15% off if you use our code DWKT at checkout at oneskin.co. And after you purchase, they're going to ask how you heard about them and you just let them know the girlies sent you. It helps us out a lot. I mean, you're going to write Do We Know Them podcast, but yeah, the girlies. And thank you so much to One Skin for being an amazing sponsor of this podcast. Now this one, this one got me because I was just like, girl, stop with the TikToks. Like with all the peace and love, I'm sure she's like frustrated with people coming for her neck and she already feels scared of the storm and it's a whole thing. I think she but probably originally was posting because people might've been like concerned for her, but then to absolutely. Uh, just stop posting. That's always what I feel like in these yeah, situations. You know what's really interesting actually that you mentioned that? I remember seeing a comment and I will find it so we can include it. It was someone saying, don't feel bad like mourning the loss of your family vacation like you do have a right to mourn that loss and she said like thank but you don't so post much it on TikTok, probably yeah i was like you keep that mourning to yourself <laughs> yeah don't be the lady from last week. every like <sighs> bro come on social media 101 like there are some things that maybe you feel as a human being that may not yeah, even no be shit, right to be other bummed, people but like i think we have keep it in here yeah keep it in your it chest up. and yeah. never let it out please i beg yeah. anyway this TikTok just mm, i don't know I just want to say thank you to the person that commented that they live in Florida and they also didn't know that the hurricane was coming until late Friday because apparently I'm expected to be a damn meteorologist and a fortune teller and know about the weather and I Not should have known when I booked this trip <laughs> That's us. So I should have known that there was a hurricane appearing. Do you think that I would have come on this trip? Really think about this. Do you think I would have come on this trip if I knew there was going to be a hurricane, you did. Do you think oh, I would have done yeah. that? Do you think <laughs> I would have brought my family you. to Florida mm -hmm. knowing that there was going to be a category five hurricane? Yeah, because I just like fun adventures like that. You, you knew there was going to be a category three, though. Your husband Keyword. literally said it earlier. Yeah, I was about to say maybe not category five. You're right there. But your husband did admit to knowing that it was going to be and at least a hurricane. No one was expecting you to know months ago 
But before you got on the plane, you knew. I don't think this attitude is helping her. I understand why she's defensive. You know, people are definitely coming for her and being like, you just wanted to make content off of this. And I don't know that any of that is true. I think that she yeah, I don't. That doesn't feel like it. I think she just wanted to go on her vacation and was just like being blissfully ignorant. Didn't want to lose out on the money, which understandably, yeah. that sucks. It's thousands of dollars to go to Disney World and just so happens the fucking time you're going, there's a hurricane. That's bullshit. But it is reality. And I do think it would have been best that they didn't go. And I think that she had the option i'm sorry but she did she just did so many tiktoks defending herself and again oh, no. understand the need to defend yourself but girl come on this has been people's favorite thing to comment well i live in kentucky well i live in louisiana i live in wherever and really they've been talking Why about it for TikTok? six months how did you not know there was gonna be a hurricane this is from google i want you to keep in mind that we left for our vacation october 4th keep in mind we already left on our vacation and then they say that it's a tropical storm then on october 5th the next day that is when they said it was a the hurricane. whole thing that gets me is like your husband literally blurted out like yeah. we knew when we were about to get on the flight like you shouldn't have said that because already then there's like no plausible deniability it's you knew and you decided to get there anyway we'll just leave it at this because honestly in the grand scheme of things if you're comparing her and Cecily, 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 I don't know the names, it's complicated, but if you're comparing them, there is no comparison. Mama Jill is a million times better in my opinion, because wow, like leaving when you know everything for a fact and it's documented and you're just like, okay, slay the house boots down. I'm going to Disney. Like that is she completely was being separate. Like kind of blissfully ignorant. And this girl is like blissfully aware. Yes. <laughs> that's what it seems like. Okay. But uh, she does discuss Mama Jill discusses like some receipts, I guess. And she shows that like, this is when we knew this is when we arrived and just tries to like clear things up oh my god stop posting i know i don't know who started a rumor that we got here monday that would mean we got here two days ago we left six days ago but also i would understand why you might think that because well i don't post my videos in real time when i posted leaving for disney we were already here when i Question posted then, this where's the footage of them actually at disney then before it started i don't know if they ever actually got to disney i know that the because day it was hurricane <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you've been there six days this was posted like a day ago and then she's like we got here six days ago but we no, have screenshots from five days ago where they had already named it a hurricane so it's kind of like yeah and if it wasn't hurricaning yet they would have fucking gone to disney and we would be seeing that footage i like that you like verbed it like hurricaning love that what i love that you like verbed it hurricaning oh hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> sorry I, I only have one ear now i can't hear you that well <laughs> but anyway she continues on we left and got to our hotel on the 4th. So just don't believe everything you see. Just because you see somebody post something does not mean that they are posting it in real time. Now that I got your attention, in my bio, you will find a link where you can donate to the victims of the last hurricane and this hurricane. <sighs> Oh, oh brother i mean i get not it that I, it's a nice gesture but the attitude when she said it i know like she said we got here on october 4th everybody's got the timeline all wrong that's literally what we said she got there october 4th on saturday october 5th milton was already a category three she could have left right then and there they didn't they actually showed themselves they didn't go to disney the first day they like just went around probably like downtown disney and stuff and was like oh my god i'm so exhausted like disney's so crazy she could have already left then. And then it was obviously a rapid kind of decline from there where everyone was freaking the fuck out. But she had, in my opinion, multiple opportunities to get the fuck out. And they were well aware that there was a hurricane there once they were already there. No, yeah. I'm still of the opinion that they were like, hopefully it won't be bad and then it was bad and they were like well we're already here and like you know exactly i don't think yeah. they're malicious i just think that the Let's defensive attitude is not helpful for sure but i also think that there are definitely some lessons to be learned here where it's just like maybe next time check the fucking weather channel app <laughs> just be like it's a, yeah you know one's asking you to be a meteorologist that's what the weather people are for okay that's mama jill let's shift to cecily cecily <laughs> i cannot i will not learn her name cecily cecily bachman <laughs> Cecily she Bochman. Oh, you, she? you have to say British, yeah. Cecily and Samantha Bochman, because they are uh, sisters and they both did the crime, okay? But anyway, this TikTok, it's now deleted, but we've got it, is, um, is something that went super viral because she was packing for Disney knowing what was coming this was like she was like bragging about it like yeah like the train of coming song was already playing and she was like let me just you're gonna say that that's what the footage was <laughs> <laughs> no 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 
<laughs> she just backs to I hear the train are coming. <laughs> but um, anyway, this is the original video that went viral and uh, she had to delete it quick. I actually saw it when it was still up. It says in the caption, kids are on fall break with a crying... <laughs> crying face and a heart the hand heart you can't use the hand heart unironically how many times have we said that i'm sorry i'm distracted i already hate her oh the stanley yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know she would pack a stanley with some lotion and is unnecessary that a stanley? Pills. i feel like it's awfully tall for a stanley looks like an awala maybe yeah off brand and not her using the sparkles unironically too that's absolutely absurd. i've never seen the, all of those together that's that's a crime straight to jail <laughs> and notice that when this was screen recorded the comments were off already but um it says oh. i can't wait to spend the week together with a heart and then we don't see the rest of the caption but this is the video how soon are we leaving oh that looks good 1 30 an hour in one hour we're leaving for florida in one hour and i need to pack <sighs> oh look at all the fall leaves oh my God. it's already <laughs> started a pile here started a pile here oh here are my packing cubes thank you lord thank you freaking Shoot. lord period <sighs> She just starts putting a bunch of Stanley cups in <laughs> I need at least 12 for the park. Literally, why is she so aggressive? I can't. This is not aesthetic know, is it, at all. This doesn't look very organized. Oh, I don't like it. I'm like not an aesthetic packer, but what the fuck is this? Oh, <laughs> stop it. I don't like it. I'm back up No, the she can never do the Stanley Cup videos. Never. Oh, really? That's fine. Hey, guys. We will see you at the airport. Love you. Bye. Also, who packs the hour before they're leaving? Uh, you know, some of us would say it could happen depending on lots of things. I've done it before, okay? No, but honestly, this doesn't say like getting ready for a category five hurricane. However, this was very much in a different situation as Mama Jill. We knew what Milton was. I remember like literally it was like the haunting of like when is it fucking coming i think it was like 24 hours out or some shit like that and then this video comes out so it was very much like you know what this is because yeah, like, everyone knows what this is what are you doing all the videos that i was watching where i literally spent hours scrolling and watching all of them was tuesday night well this was three days ago but it was posted probably the day before so everyone reamed her for that she initially turned off the comments like we just discussed it's in the screen recording and then she deleted it now, the way she addressed it, I don't know her apology. We do have it. And we have her sister's apology, fun fact. But she did end up posting on her Instagram story before her apology. Oh my God, on her way to Florida. <laughs> yeah, it's literally her with... <laughs> I can't. I can't. The influencer itis is a, an epidemic that we need to cure. On our way to Florida with a peace sign when Milton is ready to ram everybody in its wake. Like, what are you talking about? She then posted, I think I got three to five hours of sleep. No reason, just couldn't sleep. And then I cried because I was afraid of being tired. What the what fuck? The fuck? <laughs> Are you on? Literally, the, the amount of people I saw that were literally crying, being like, I haven't slept in three days because I'm scared that my house is gonna float away. People who have like livestock and not sure what to do. Like, what are you talking oh, about? You're I saw a girl, she she did, she did was like wanting to put the horse in the living room and her family didn't want her to. And she was like, but can't we? And I was oh, like, yes, put it in the living room. Quite opposite. I saw a horse in someone's living room eating hay and living its good, best life. Good, <laughs> And chickens and like tents in people's living room. Oh my God, there was one, there was one I cried. There was horses in a barn and it's like I get that you can't not everyone has a living room to put horses in and stuff and if you have a bunch then it's dangerous also because they'll freak out and they painted their phone numbers huge on them because the best thing that with a lot of animals is just my, to let them no, go. No, I know. I saw all of those. Yeah, the, the best chance that they have is in pasture if you can't bring yeah. them into your house, which again, it depends on your horse's like temperament and stuff because they could freak out. And if you have a lot of them. Oh my God, it's just it's just a fucking the nightmare. One, I, do, I, I will give you a good news one though, that I saw a lady that had left her like uh, barnyard animals <laughs> behind. They were coming back home and they were driving and all the animals were fine, but they were just soaking wet. And the donkey was like running along next to the car and like it was so excited and it was happy because they reunited what are y'all doing you came to higher ground aren't you smart aren't you smarty pantses come on come on sweetie pies <laughs> look at him kicking are you happy and looking like a drowned rat come on come on go bully the pig a few trees down Come on, sweetie pie. <laughs> oh, Lord, you look a wreck. 
Got the zoomies. Look at you. I can't even recognize you. You're soaking wet. You're soaking wet. <laughs> Come on, fatty pig. Come on, little pumpkin. <laughs> oh, fatty. Come on, fatty keeks. Come on, fatty keeks. Come on, fatty keeks. Hi, sweetie. Oh, that nose. Look at, Look at it. We, what? What? <laughs> oh, he's trying to rub. Say, God, thank God you're here. Little hug. Oh, you're so sweet. He's like, oh, thank God. You're here. Oh, rub a dub dub. But you know what's scarier than any of that? Being tired. Am I right? Bitch, if I was scared of I'm being pretty, tired, I'm my life would be ruined. I'm scared all the time. <laughs> I literally be in fear constantly. I'm in a constant state of terror. So that's her, you know, documenting her brave journey to Florida. Bless her, so you know. Well, she's tired. I just couldn't imagine. Literally any trip I have with my kids, I'm gonna be like, oh God, this is gonna fuck. I can't, suck. even <laughs> if there was no hurricane or anything, like I, the fact that she posted that is like, embarrassing but i will say she does apologize because this was a rapid decline okay people came now i don't know a bunch of the lore of her sister but i do know her sister was along for the trip and she's also an influencer and she might have also been scared and tired you know everybody <laughs> it's scary so like we can't blame them but first comes cecily's apology and i'm first reacting with you i haven't seen this yet hi guys i wanted to make a video from my last video prior to leaving to go to Florida and just explain everything. My family is no longer in Florida. We are now in Nashville and we left Florida once evacuation orders were issued. We had planned this trip to go to Florida during fall break. We had called our hotel and we were advised that it was still under an aerial flood watch and that in the location of where we would be, that we would be okay. That decision, do I regret it? Absolutely. I am very naive when it comes to the way that storms develop and how quickly. <laughs> yeah. You can be naive in many things, girl, but in the way that storms develop, that's wild. I'm sorry. That's fucking crazy. What do you mean you're naive in the way that storms develop? You mean you just don't give a shit and you're just like, oh, wait, whoopsie. Well, she was know. tired. Maybe she just didn't fully comprehend. She was fucking exhausted. That is kind of a wild statement. I feel like I'm naive in a lot of things. I mean, I literally got scammed out of a thousand dollars for cement, but like, you know, there's trusting people Where was there's she believing from? people she well i don't know she says she was in nashville so i don't know if she's from nashville definitely not in the I, again anywhere like where i'm the storm was literally affecting. on the opposite side of the country and i was fully aware yeah it's just a completely wild thing to say i'm naive in the way that storms develop <laughs> one of my favorite sentences in a while and also i hate it when people are like how do you not know like everyone knew but this isn't something that like you had to be like everyone heard the no, train no. Of coming. it like, was please. everywhere yeah, yeah get over it they can develop Looking back, that is something that I wish that I can change. This storm quickly turned into a category five hurricane and NASA declared that it was the fastest advancing hurricane Not in the history. Not the NASA. And then like, once NASA, it was declared really? as a category five hurricane, that is when we decided to leave. I am fully aware of the devastation that Hurricane Milton can and will bring to families homes, lives, animals, livelihoods. I am investing in relief organizations and I am also supporting them. I am gonna be sharing a resource link so that way if you do wanna also participate in giving, you can also participate. I will be supporting and this is something that I'll continue to be following up with. I couldn't continue on life without posting this video. Hurricane Milton is heavy on my heart right now. It's not a video. It's an Instagram story that expires in 24 hours. Just want to put that out there. She didn't repost this on her TikTok. It's not living anywhere. It's gone. Okay, by the time we post this, it's long gone. It only lives here. This is the only place that I know of. Like, literally, come on. And I mean, Mama Jill technically did the same thing where it's just like, you guys can donate there. Where are your donations? Let, let's just see a little receipt there. That doesn't hurt anybody. 500 bucks. Well, did did it she? Away. The first one, she didn't even say she was donating. And she just no, no, she said, this is where you can donate. <laughs> <laughs> On my heart right now. And it will continue to be. Thank you for watching. Love you guys.
I'm going to go to sleep now. Oh my God. And then literally it's one slideshow of like her throwing up a link that's going to expire in 24 hours. That's wild. Anyway, then we have her sister's apology just to kind of like put a little cherry on top of that little shit cake. Okay, let's talk about the last five days. I know that I have been radio silent on here. The last thing that you guys saw for me was that we were Orlando bound, but I wanted to Not wait Orlando to bound. make a video until I was back in my home to show you guys that I am not in Florida that we are here. I've always built this page and this relationship with you guys based on vulnerability and honesty and willingness to just talk about the hard stuff. So here we are. I have often said that trust is gained in droplets and lost in buckets. So I'm hoping to gain a little bit more than droplets back with you guys today. Starting from the very beginning, we planned this trip about six months ago. Every year on fall break, we like to visit some of our friends in Florida. About a month ago, Sam and Seth decided that they were also gonna go to Orlando. So we thought we would make a little trip of it and do some fun things together. On Saturday afternoon, I believe we first learned that there was a tropical depression, Milton. And we started to wonder about this trip especially since we were we planning to packing. leave on Sunday. <laughs> on Sunday after church, we called the hotels, we called the parks. Are there closures? Are you still running under full operation? Should we be going? Should we not? No red flags were thrown up. We were told that it was gonna be rainy and windy on those days, an intense thunderstorm. Before we took off on our plane, Milton was a cat one hurricane. We got to our hotel, we checked in at the front desk, we asked what their thoughts and feelings were, um, they said it's going to be windy, rainy, thunderstorms, but nothing they hadn't seen before. We were very inland. It was going to be fine. We went to bed. We woke up Monday morning. And at 7.33 a.m. Eastern time on Monday, October 7th, CNN comes out with this article. Hurricane Milton has strengthened to a cat three. That was when we started to get really concerned. From that Monday morning to that Monday evening, Milton had gone from a cat three to a cat five. And Jake sent me this post from NASA that says Milton is the fastest Atlantic growing hurricane to intensify from a tropical depression to a cat five hurricane taking just over 48 hours. Those 48 hours were Saturday to Monday when we had gotten there on Sunday. The second that we found out about that, all four of us looked at each other Sam says me and Jake, and we said, we've got to get out of here. The problem with that, in my opinion, is that you knew at the very least, just like Mama Jill, that it was going to be a tropical storm at the very least, which like in the freaking ocean and shit, and it's all hot, it's going to build up. But like you knew, you both knew that at the very least, it was going to be a tropical storm. Then you get there and say, oh shit. My issue with that is that you are taking up room and resources to get the fuck out of there. And that is why we had situations of people taking five hours to go one, what did she say, like a couple miles or some shit like that? Well, that's, I know people were literally running out of, like they'd have gas, but then they would run out of gas because they couldn't get to another gas station before and they And it's ran like, out. okay, good, you got out, but like you also took room and made it harder for people who are natives there that had no choice because they lived there to get out. And that is fucked up in my opinion and i know that like her sister is a little bit more i don't even want to say vulnerable no not really but like she's just a little bit more forthcoming than uh her sister who was just like you know we just it was just nasa said it was so fast and like okay it could be fast growing and maybe nobody knew exactly how bad it would be but everybody involved in all the stories we were talking about knew it was a fucking tropical storm knew it was a hurricane maybe category one or whatever the fuck they thought it was going to be and like that's bullshit like you're still going because you want to go to disney world why do you want to be even tropical storm wise why do you want to be at disney world when there's a tropical storm with your toddlers i, I will never understand yeah well that that's weird to me i guess at least they left because i mean i feel like they kind of got into a lose-lose that like if they stayed people would have been mad and if they would have left people were mad solution don't go but like yeah no i i get what you're yeah. saying i don't know i like yeah should they have gone I mean, I wouldn't have, but I feel like for their timeline, especially, I mean, I don't know what a, a tropical storm even is because I live in California. So like tropical storm is still a lot of wind, a lot of rain. What you're basically looking at when you hear there's a tropical storm when we're going is that we are not going to be in the parks on any sort of sunny day. Like it is going to be raining the entire time we're there. So like at the very least, it's like, that doesn't sound fun. Like you can get a rain check from Disney. I'm pretty sure that's not even hard to get. The whole thing for me is that when Cecily was 
packing. Okay, because I don't remember any content well, she from has, I have reasons, different reasons. Okay, like, just because she uses a Stanley. But like literally, <laughs> I remember seeing Cecily's original content, like I said, on my For You page. And I remember even before the comments were turned off and people were calling her out. It happened when people knew how severe Milton was because that's what she was getting called out for. That's why she turned off the comments. So like they yeah. can say, oh, it was only this and it was so fast growing. You were packing and showing people that you were packing to leave and people were begging you to stay in your house. I don't know. I just see it as like these people didn't want to lose out money. And again, I get it because Disney's so fucking expensive. And if it six months from now, we plan this like epic Disney trip and we put $10,000 into it and then there's a hurricane, that sucks. I'm not saying it doesn't suck. I'm saying that we need to like as humans take a, a little gander into like, okay, let's put things into perspective. Money doesn't matter. Material things don't matter. This is like a seriously life-threatening situation potentially. Let's maybe not. I don't know. I think that it's one thing to be naive or stupid or whatever. And then I think it's a whole other to be an influencer with like Mama Jill, where I'm just like, why are you still posting? Like, don't, we don't need this. Just like take the L, understand that next time you're going to need to check the weather like a thousand times, which is just a good like human you know, practice. Again, you don't need to be a fortune teller or a meteorologist no. to know just that double check. Coming. You know, just just make sure yeah. everything's good. I understand. Again, I'm not saying it's like fuck your money and fuck everything. It sucks. And it would have sucked regardless, but it would have sucked a lot less for maybe a million other reasons where it's just like, just stay home, lose out on the money and try to get as many refunds as you can. Obviously, you know, make the calls you gotta make once well, everything's that's passed. Say, it's not giving as much overtly disrespectful as stay salty yeah. was, but it's kind of the same situation. In like a weird way, yes. It's kind of just like, well, I spent the money on this. So like, what are we gonna do yeah. about it? Try to get refunds, like, girl, well, I mean, people on. have bigger things to Disney, worry about. Disney, I'm yeah. pretty sure it's pretty easy to get rain checks, especially if you booked at a Disney resort. Like, I just think that so many things things could have gone differently. And at the end of the day, if the worst thing that happens to you is you lose out on a couple thousand dollars, which is, it sucks. I'm not going to say it doesn't suck. It obviously sucks. That is a lot better than the alternative, which is just what the fuck is this? Like you, you went to a place where people were trying to evacuate to, okay, because that's like the closest. Like uh, all in all, I understand not wanting to lose money. I think that this was all dumb. And I think that documenting it was even dumber. And I just think, my God, to have that kind of like the goal and the gumption <laughs> to come online and then just be like, Mama Jill, just be like, we can't get out. Like, no shit, you can't get out. Like nobody could get out. That's the fucking, like, it just, it sucks for everyone. It's funny, not funny, haha, funny, weird, that the way you just even worded that, all I can think of, and this isn't even our next topic, but did you see what's his oh, what's his name? Jack Dougherty oh, crashed his McLaren while live streaming, and then asked someone to yeah live streaming, asked someone to hold the camera while he got out of the car. Help! 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 Break the fucking window! Oh! Oh! Help! Oh fuck! Can you hold this? Oh, it's funny. Oh, fuck. Oh, no, my fucking car, bro. Vamos, baby. Vamos. Oh. Fuck, dude. My fucking car. And then kept live streaming and then proceeded to go, finally go around. I don't think he went to go around to check on his cameraman who was in the passenger seat bleeding. Holy shit, no. Are you fucking kidding me, bro? No! Mike, are you good? Oh shit! Oh fuck! He went to go give him the camera so he could keep filming. Are you okay? Holy fuck! Oh my god, bro! Bro, my whole fucking car, bro! No fucking way! Oh my gosh! There's no fucking Michael here. Michael, do you have your film on that phone too? No. Yeah, it's a you know, it's a, it's an epidemic, and it, it was really just is. like, what's happening? What are we? Whatever doing? it is, I want to stop doing it. Speaking of um, links, though, to donate, we will put some links Absolutely. for yeah. uh, support for Hurricane Milton, Hurricane. It Helene, just battered Hur St. Petersburg, it, Sarasota, North just, Carolina. It's oh my god, even still, yeah. like oh, it's gonna take them years to recover from that. It's 
awful. It's devastating. So we'll put links below and we will donate as well. Yeah. Oh my God. My heart just goes out to all my Floridian people. And uh, I've been there. I've, I've done the hurricane thing. And I just, I know everyone, even if you were born and raised there, was scared as fuck for Milton. So I'm just hoping yeah, that that's my. Is okay. I have um, two sets of aunts and uncles and cousin live in Florida. Oh, really? My cousin lives in Tampa. Oh, wow. And they were fine? But he evacuated, yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, we do have one more topic. We'll try to keep this short, but I did want to cover this because this is something we're getting tagged in a lot. I don't know if you've uh, been checking your TikTok mentions, but holy shit. I came across it last night and was baffled the entire story up until the end. It's something. Now, what I like about stories like this is it's like he kind of tells the majority of the story and then it's just a few little follow-ups so we can kind of like let him tell the story, you know? Oh, I've never seen those follow-ups. Oh, girl, is there? Oh, yeah. So the people that we're talking about are Brett and Maria and Hadley. Oh, there's a third. We got a little, little tiny, the teeniest rabbit hole. It's just so tiny. But uh, we're going down it. Okay, you have no choice. So it all started with Brett and this story that he posted to TikTok. And it was his first TikTok ever. I'm pretty sure. I could tell. Or if it wasn't his first one. Oh, no, it wasn't his first one. Oh, wait, yeah. Well, he's not like a content creator. It wasn't his first one, but it was like his one, two, three, four, fifth, sixth. And then the other one's were very not involved. He's in not this. a content creator. No, not no, not at all. He's doing a flabongo. A, a what? <laughs> a flabongo. The fuck is that? <laughs> Beer bong with a flamingo. You know, explain it to me another day. I have no idea what the fuck. You're it's doing. like you know, like a lawn flamingo. It's like hollowed out, and then you drink. Totally. You, you no, yeah. Drink totally. through the beak. He's holding it. You could see it. This is the story of me agreeing to get an older woman pregnant, and then her trying to ruin my life. When I was 23, I had a one night stand with a girl from my hometown named Maria. We both knew it was nothing more than that and we didn't speak after. Several months later, I received a text from her saying that she hadn't been lucky in love and she wanted the baby before it was too late. So she asked if I would get her pregnant and I wouldn't have to bear any responsibility, like a sperm donor. Well, I considered it and I first thought no, but after some you know, time to think about it, I thought it'd be the right thing to do for someone struggling. Off the bat, I was like, the right thing to do seemed like the most absolute bizarre shit I've ever heard. When I heard that, I was like, I was like, okay, you don't like that what? sperm doning isn't something you do out of pity. Like it's just seems really Yeah, weird. that's I was like, she can get a sperm donor. Like, I don't know. Absolutely. What? And also, especially considering the fact that you described her not as someone random, but as a one night stand, someone you have had sex with before now wants you to father her children. And you're just like, you know what? Totally. Yeah. They, well, so again, this isn't a donor situation. It's like, well, then they had sex again. Okay. Because sperm doning, if you don't know, is uh, technically the act of usually either someone will like buy sperm from somewhere that will like send it frozen and you inject it. It's like a not like, hey, will you come have sex with me and hope I get pregnant? Yeah, no, no. Being a sperm donor does not involve sex. Usually. Like that is not a no, thing that no. is standard You don't usually all. meet the sperm donor. No, you just need the sperm and usually just turkey baste it right up in there. Yeah, but exactly. Like, yeah, but I felt the same way when I heard this. I was like, the right thing to do? Hmm, interesting. I know. I thought that was interesting. I was like, okay, well, how well do you know her? And he says she's an older woman, but like... She doesn't even look much older than him in any of the photos or like anything that I saw Well, that's her. why I was like, how much older? Because how old is he? Like, it's all very weird. So we filled out an ironclad agreement and you know basically i would wouldn't be responsible at all a while later she told me she was ovulating and then a few weeks after that she told me she was pregnant and it had worked i like that he leaves out that they had sex we didn't speak mm -hmm, after mm -hmm. that unbeknownst to me she contacted my family behind my back and invited them to the baby shower they then began getting dinner or whatever regularly and as she got to know my parents my parents started encouraging me to be in the baby's life and once i found out it was a little girl I thought it was the right thing to do. Wee wee. Ha, ha. When I freaking when I heard that, I, I was like, so many things. I was pardon? like, she invited her parents to the baby shower. Were you invited to the baby shower? He was like, literally, like, they were, were like planning it. Like, and then he's like, and then they started getting dinner. What do you mean they started getting dinner? Like, no, no. My biggest fucking thing that just tripped me out was like, wait. So you found out it was a little girl. You're like, okay, I'll be in her life. Fuck it. Like, oh, I was getting to that. A little boy, no father for a no, little boy. I don't give a shit about you, bitch. Like, what do you mean? No, the whole thing was so weird and too close. Like, this is why you don't do this. It just to me when I saw this because I saw it without any other context was just like this seems so poorly planned out that it actually makes my head hurt. Like, what do you mean? This isn't something well, you I fuck mean, around she, with. This is a child. She deserves it. So he just wanted to give her that baby she's always dreamed of. I'm like, I. That's not no. Yeah, he. Uh, 
uh, now is on screen showing a photo of him holding his newborn daughter's feet and then it's a tattoo and he explains he got it for her. I'm going to be there for the birth and I got a tattoo of our daughter's middle name before she was born. After our daughter was born, Maria wanted us to be together and be a family and he shows text messages of her saying, I want to try and make it work with us being a family. Can we do that? I want to be with you, Brett. I hate when you leave us. I just need you to say something or how you feel about that. And he said, I'm sorry, but that isn't what I want to do. And she said, that hurts. Now I will say, this isn't giving sperm donor vibes. This is giving you guys had something going on. She thought you may be a family and you're not now. And she's devastated. Which I mean, not defending him, but it could be they were together as a family like with the daughter, not like he could be. and her were no, in a absolutely. relationship or Yeah, anything. it could have been. I mean, obviously. But I do wonder if maybe there was some other sexual encounters past these two that he, um, well, actually he only references really the one, but. Yeah, she was, uh, <laughs> she had a miraculous conception. We have no idea how she got pregnant. Yeah, Definitely exactly. wasn't because they fucked. But like, you know, when you read in between the lines, it's like, okay, you guys had a sexual relationship. You agreed to have her child. That was something you intentionally did. And for some reason thought that her agreeing to be like, first of all, the ironclad agreement where is it? I've never seen it. I don't know what you're and, talking about. Well, and he puts it in quotes. I'm like, what does that mean? So not like, that iron like, <laughs> Did I'm she confused. just like print it out of off Canva or like what? It's like one of those certificates from the from so mink. Yeah, no, but also then it just comes to like, that is an insane decision to make. Like I have been with many guys who like did not want to commit. Okay. They had an, a severe allergy to commitment. There was no way I could propose like, okay, well then just knock me up and it's fine. And that they would do it. That just seems like that would never also, have happened. Hold, please. I'm aware that, um, you know, she had his baby, but why is the contact baby? Oh, it's BM. I think baby mama. Oh, I thought I was assuming Maria maybe no, or something. No, no, but no. like, even still, I was like, okay, Maria would have been fine. I also like that um, she's asking if he wants Popeyes at the top. Well, yeah, because they were together and it's, I don't know. All weird. Let's continue. I said I didn't want to do that. She wouldn't let me see my daughter. My main source of income at the time was the Airbnb that I owned. And she said this a few months after she was born. The baby and I need to stay in your house for like two months until I can get our own place so that I can save a little more. I'm taking a position remote, which comes with a huge pay cut, but I won't have to put our daughter in daycare and I can be home with her. Looks like we're closing this property on June 9th and I'm not going to try and say that. Met, met. I don't know. So I'm hoping to be packed up and out of this apartment the weekend prior to the 9th. I'll put all of my stuff in storage except for our clothes. Can we stay there? An hour and 15 minutes later, oh. she does pointing up to it and says, um, kind of important you respond. And then he doesn't respond. And then another hour and 15 minutes later, she says, oh, this is really aggressive. <laughs> this is all within two hours. Cool. You're deliberately ignoring me. And it's extremely frustrating considering I'm asking you to put a roof over your daughter head. If you don't want to help us, then let's see a lawyer and sign your rights over and let me legally blank. Yeah. And I guess the, the message continues after this. But also what's super weird is like, what do you mean rights though? Because like, I thought there were no rights. Ironclad. What about their ironclad yeah, agreement? there's no rights. It was just a sperm donor situation. Nothing about the receipts he gave were like giving sperm donor at all, but we'll continue. I felt bad. So I let her move in for several months, rent free. Once she moved out, she told me this. I've never done we anything never to see warm. any responses from him, though. I think it's interesting, too. Yeah, does he just ignore like, her? Well, I don't know. So he says he let her move in, but we never see that kind of True, conversation. Yeah. So then he just skips to that last one was May 16th, and this is October 25th. So five months later, this is what I want. I want you to pay her daycare the full amount. You can have her one full weekend a month if you stay at your parents. Let me know if this works for you. Let's just figure this out before you get into town. I don't want to have to speak to you anymore. Seven hours later that night, she says, okay, so this is okay. I want to get this over with. And then immediately responds right after. It says, can you please respond? We were talking about our child. We talked about having some kind of agreement by this evening, Brett. So we need to figure this out. If you don't respond to me, I'm going to quit responding to you. Supervised visits, but I agreed to keep the peace. I would come home as often as I could to see our daughter, and things were usually okay when I was there. These are all from her Facebook. One Halloween, I didn't want to wear matching costumes with Maria, so she wouldn't let me see my daughter for a while. And when our daughter was being baptized, I drove a 14 hour round trip from Nashville to attend. And because I didn't want to see Maria the night before, she didn't allow me to come to the baptism at all. Soon after this, she served me with child support, saying that our original contract wasn't valid because our daughter didn't have a social security number yet. 
and I didn't fight her on it. What in tarnation? What? what do you mean? That is the weirdest shit I've ever heard in my life. There are whole adoption agreements that can be so ironclad that you will not be able to change shit. Can't you make those before birth, right? I Am I wrong? Well, no, I've they don't finalize adoptions till like way down the line. No, but like a newborn adoption, like you show up to the hospital and leave with them? No, they're not finalized immediately, but also I'm just sensing that again, this is like a canvas certificate that you printed out. It's like, you are not the public. Yeah, is, maybe, and again, that kind of is just wild because you're a full grown adult. I don't care if you describe her as an older adult. You were a full grown adult when you came into that agreement and you're gonna tell me that you didn't know what logistics would actually hold in the longer, like, what? Well, and also, like, he was he was there for the birth. I'm sure he's on the birth certificate, so... Well, after everything about those text messages is you are the father. You always knew you were the father. There was no sperm donor. That, that's all I'm reading is, like, there was no sperm donor. I didn't fight her on it. Uh, I didn't have the time. I was living away. I ended up paying her $10,000 up front and seven fifty a month. I was able to move home soon after that, and I began seeing our daughter regularly. Everything was going really well until I got a girlfriend. Let Even me zoom into that photo where you're gripping by her titty. I think they were still fucking. I'm sorry. Is that disrespectful? I just think that, that like he is holding her not like baby mama. He's holding her like... Why is his face blurred out? I don't know. <laughs> Actually, that's a good question. But like, <laughs> that's not a hold of someone you don't like, right? Like, it's not on her waist, but it's like right by her titty. I don't know. I mean, she has pretty big titties. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're like, anywhere they grip by the shoulder, it's gonna be there. But like, does that seem like someone you know. hate that you're just tolerating because this is your daughter? No. It doesn't. Like, the the vibes don't give that to me. It's like, yeah, I feel like he could have been hanging this out with the daughter. This doesn't look like they were her, fucking doing a together. supervised meeting at a McDonald's or a mall. No, that looks like they were on a family they were vacation. On vacation. Like, I am... Mm. I don't, well, know. I don't know where they live. Something Maybe they were just stinks. at the beach. But. Though she had a boyfriend who was regularly around our daughter. She said that my girlfriend couldn't be around our daughter. I was able to get our daughter for an afternoon. And Maria asked what I was doing. I told her that I was with my girlfriend and we were at Lowe's together. She freaked out. I said I'd bring her daughter back to her as soon as we were done. But instead, Maria drove to Lowe's. Lowe's? And apparently called my dad and was running up and down the aisle screaming. I don't know what actually happened, but she was freaking out, just blowing up my phone, thinking she was in danger. And keep in mind, my girlfriend is a mom as well as a nurse. Our daughter was never in any danger. That part I was confused by because something about calling the dad but and then running up the aisles, wasn't he at Lowe's? What does he mean he didn't know what happened? That whole story was weird. And then like, what, we don't need to see a picture of your daughter in the car yeah. at Lowe's. When I offered Maria and my girlfriend to get to know each other so they'd be comfortable, you know, my daughter being around, she immediately said no and you know, called my girlfriend a word that rhymes with chore and refused to get to know her. Maria then made a public post saying that I was a deadbeat dad and that I hadn't seen her daughter in weeks. Here I am with our daughter just a few days prior to this post. I also left my best friend's bachelor party a day early so I could be home for Father's Day and she still wouldn't allow me to see her. She even said this to my grandmother. She had her friends comment mean things on my girlfriend's social media multiple times, even though my girlfriend has n never been anything but nice to Maria. Well, here's the post from the grandmother. This is why you should date and marry someone you know and who wants a life with you because children are going to live with these choices. Then I'm assuming daughter's name is precious, but she didn't come into this world under normal choices and circumstances. The guy had no clue what he was getting into. I truly wish you and blank a wonderful life, but choices have consequences. Praying for you to find the guy you're meant to have in the life that makes you happy. This is his grandma? And then Maria, yes. And I was like, maybe stay Grandmas, out of it, Granny. get off of Facebook, please. I just beg all of you. Yeah. <laughs> but then Maria says, your response is sickening to me, but I guess since you're his grandmother, of course you'll respond with something like this. The fact that you could turn this around on me and not recognize that he decided that he wanted to be a father. He had every chance to walk away and honestly, I wish he would have, but he was there at the hospital. He chose to sign the birth certificate. Oh, so there. I was right, signed the birth certificate. So whatever happened prior to that went out the window. So the ironclad agreement went out the window because he put his name on the birth certificate. I guess she's saying. You don't get to be a half-assed dad, sorry. It's his family that enables this behavior. Let's not forget that both him and his brother have both abandoned their children for long periods of time. Something is seriously wrong with all of you guys. I pray for you all. 
And then she tags their grandmother again and says, oh, wow. And your grandson puts his thing in anything that walks because he's reckless or he, (laughs) or quote, he doesn't know what he was getting himself into. So the next poor girl who gets pregnant by him, are you going to say, well, your actions have consequences? When he decides to be absent from that child's life too, please do not come at me. I don't care to hurt any of your feelings anymore. Okay. Bye. Bit intense. Well, she doesn't paint it as she requested him to be a sperm donor. Part of it may seem like there was an initial agreement. And and what she's saying may also indicate that. I just cannot get past like, so you really just didn't fucking think it through. Like you were just like, okay, then I'll just be a dad. Like, it's fine. Like I've talked about it so many times on the show. Bringing a child into this world is one of the most insane things a human being could do ever. Well, remember he was doing her a favor because it was a charity thing. Yeah, you know? no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, wonderful. <laughs> but I'm saying like when he decided, oh, it's a little girl. Okay, I'll be there. That no, I'm decision. kidding. Was, the whole thing is fucking weird. <laughs> That's why you don't just go, I mean, she deserves it. She deserves a kid. Just, I'll do it's it. It's just insanity. Like, there's naivety, naivete, however you pronounce naivete. it. And then there's yeah. this fucking A. Like, please. I the get, whole this story is... is just weird. And then it gets interesting. Just to do this, I want to make sure that she doesn't twist the story and make it seem like I abandoned our daughter. I recently found out that our daughter isn't mine. I don't know who the dad is, but I've had two paternity tests done. And they both say this. I believed Maria when she told me that I was the only possible father. The situation was weird, but I was always happy to be a dad. I I knew that Maria already knew she was pregnant. She had to have when she asked me to get her pregnant. I didn't think that was something that someone would lie about to another human being. What do you... What do you mean you knew she was pregnant when she asked you to get her pregnant? Meaning that's not your kid. My brain hurts. Also, some people have said this is a home paternity test. I don't know the legitimacy of that, but if it is true, you know, that might not even, I don't know. I don't know. It just seems like so sloppily done that again, as is a common theme with everything on this show, you couldn't have waterboarded this out of me. I would have just taken this straight to the fucking grave. Not only to me, but my entire family as well. Everybody is distraught about this. Maria, I allowed you to paint me as the villain and you as the victim for years to keep peace. But I hope you know that the only victim here is your child. Wild. Okay. Now, what if I told you that just a day or two after this, he hard launched his relationship with a famous influencer, Nurse Hadley, who has 2 million followers on TikTok. Is that the nurse he was referencing earlier that he was dating? I do believe so. Me thinks he just wanted to hard launch this and thought that Maria would come up and be like, what the fuck, you're a deadbeat dad, you know? Oh, so he he was just trying to get ahead of it? I think so. This is the hard launch. You should write a book. I might know a best-selling author. Girl, the contractor's cute. Does he come with the hell? Ew. He does. I'm going to throw up. (laughs) I'm sorry. I love happiness. That was just a hard watch. So, yeah. She's a famous nurse, influencer person, and apparently they've been together for a long time, and they launched it after the story went public. It seems to me like that's a little bit too strategic for it to not be the reason why he would come forward after years of this. But um, anyway, Maria did do a Snapchat story response. Before you and all start believing his shit, um, there's just a few things that I want you to take into consideration. Is first, the collection date um, was August 10th. 2024. Well, I had my daughter on August 10th, 2024. And then he shows that he had the daughter August 10th, right? Did did she say collection date? Is that semen? So did they not have sex? Or was that what she's calling it? (laughs) Or is the collection like I'm collecting my child? (laughs) Oh, I I definitely got, I was thinking semen. You can't use those words when you're talking sperm donor because... (laughs) We're going to think he's getting a semen sample. This is something that Brett posted, by the way, and the caption says, the lies continue, dot, dot, dot. And then the top comment is, Maria, do you know you have 30 minutes? So like people saw this as some sort of like, are we dumb? Like, why don't I get it? I'm just confused at what she was even just saying. (laughs) Did you want to play it again? (laughs) Maybe. Before you can all start believing his shit, um, there's just a few things that I want you to take into consideration is first, the collection date. Um, was August 10th, 2024. Well, I had my daughter on August 10th, 2024. 
Did she just say the same date? You know that uh, meme with all the like equations floating around it? That's me right <laughs> now. I'm just like, She just said August second. 10th, 2024 twice. What's the math on something? You know what? I need future editing Lily to weigh in on this. I just, <laughs> my brain hurts. What so. is a collection date? She she couldn't have collected the sperm and then had the baby the same day. That doesn't, she I don't think that's how busy. Work. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I'm so confused. Okay. We're going to skip right past that and hopefully Lily has some insight later. Okay. Moving on. Right. <laughs> now, we kind of get to brett being outed quote unquote for having a full-blown relationship with maria okay people are like you weren't a sperm donor you weren't someone that was just visiting your child you guys were in a relationship and this was a lot of collection dates got it and this was a tiktoker like pointing that out at a one night stand with a girl from my hometown named maria we both knew it was nothing more than that and we didn't speak out man this man done had you calling this maria girl a stalker crazy and everything above Y'all very clearly heard him say that they had a one night stand and then he By the didn't way, while she's uh, pointing this out, it's a picture of Brett holding up a sign that says Maria loves Brett 12 12 20. So four years before. So. Again. But look at him right here. Look at him cheesing. He looks very happy with Maria back then. Do we have different oh, definitions of what a one night stand is? Because look at this man smiling at the camera while Maria kisses his cheek. So when you have a one night stand with someone, is it normal to celebrate their birthdays with them after? And I mean, in every picture with his one night stand. They were together for years, it seems like. So the timeline starts in 2020. When did they have the baby, though? Oh, God, don't get me started with the collection. I don't fucking know. That's that's what I'm confused, because these are 2020 and 2021, not 2024. So did they, like, have a relationship? And then they, like, And then later on, she reached out and was like, can you have my child? And he just was like, yeah, I'll be a sperm donor for someone I had a three-year relationship with. Like, I mean, honestly, that makes it a little more sense than this, oh, she was this random older woman from my own Well, it never made when i clicked it i was like random older he just said oh yeah it's the right thing to do never made and sense also me. he refers to her as an older woman but then he says girl from my hometown <laughs> literally they look the same age i don't know if she yeah, just looks no, great for, sure. for her age but like uh, please older yeah, no, woman I, she's not I don't 70 and look at him smiling now here's maria and him on a boat and him singing to her I don't trust nothing that he says and he's giving typical baby daddy who gets a new girlfriend and then tries to act like he doesn't like his baby mama. And in regards to the paternity test, I find it very weird that it was the new girlfriend pushing for a paternity test. And although they're both well to do financially, they chose to take an at home test instead. Now, Brett and his girlfriend, Nurse Hadley, did say that he is going to go to the courthouse and get a paternity test through them. all the comments are so ripping this girl apart. It says, he explained she and him reconnected and decided to basically be her donor. So, like, now it's being painted as, like, no, no, he explained, they reconnect. No, 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 no. He described her as a one-night stand and then basically said he felt bad for her and did her a favor by being yeah. her sperm donor. Someone points out, though, that they took a photo in December 2020 and then wore the exact same outfits for a photo in July of 2021. Sus. Oh, I mean, me. <laughs> Just wear the same I, He did look similar in a lot of those photos. He said that they had a one night stand. Then she messaged him later saying she was not having luck at finding love. So they hooked up again. That's not what he said. He never even said how they made a baby allegedly no he he just found out she was ovulating and then she had the baby people are saying personally i think it's too early to take any sides i agree his behavior is weird however i'll wait until a court ordered dna test girl i won't care by then but like period i get what you mean and then this girl replies the problem is millions of people attacking her without hearing her side and that's exactly what's happening and that's why she got onto snapchat crying and uh spoiler alert her cousin came out on uh instagram stories and is writing about this and that's where all those photos come from where the tiktoker was just responding to it's a okay. uh, matt looking very happy in their relationship along the way i don't know how it happened but uh people started accusing nurse hadley of losing custody of her kids i guess she has children i don't know the nurse hadley lore forgive me but uh she did comment back to someone who was talking about this and said i have custody of all my kids and i will be suing her for this absolutely not okay none of what she said of me is true any proof y'all need i've got so i'm assuming maria's cousin Maria, everyone started posting and accusing her of stuff. So then Maria's cousin clarifies and says, let me clarify, Hadley didn't lose custody of her kids. She gave her son to her ex-husband because he has a learning disability. 
That's a wild statement. <laughs> you don't know that. Do you know these people? That seems weird. I don't know about you all, but I can never give my child away. It's tough for me to sympathize with her because she's a hypocrite. She doesn't want false information spread, yet she condones Brett's behavior. Instead of reaching out to Maria about the at-home paternity test results, Brett took it to social media. Maria found out just like the rest of us did yesterday. Can you imagine checking your phone and seeing hundreds of messages and videos of your baby daddy claiming he didn't know you and that it was just a one-night stand? He painted a narrative that made my cousin look like a crazy malicious stalker. Is she suggesting that Maria didn't know the paternity test results and that that's what prompted everything yeah i was like well i don't know if i would say he she was a stalker but it also he's claiming he was under the impression that it couldn't have been anyone else's kid and she probably shouldn't be shocked if you know it is not his then again it was immaculate conception she continues on and says i'm here to defend my cousin because she doesn't deserve any of this hate if only you knew what a deadbeat brett truly is he doesn't even pay child support when maria met brett he didn't have a job maria has always been the breadwinner brett you need to tell the viewers about the time you kidnapped your daughter from daycare without maria's knowledge and didn't answer your phone for hours then you told her to meet you at lowe's to get the kid yet you accused her of stalking you so they're saying it wasn't just because he was at lowe's with a girlfriend it's because he took her out of daycare without uh, oh brother this My is just hurts. so messy i don't like any of this so messy isn't it ironic that hadley never posted about you on her platform until you reached a certain number of views i don't know if it's something i said that got under her skin or if she was just waiting until she had followers but one thing is clear they are not genuine and are only in it for the money and views i believe nurse hadley tampered with the two tests without brett's knowledge <laughs> Okay, girl, you got me off the train already. Like, uh, what the fuck are you talking about? That's insane. Well, and also, if the whole, like, he's a deadbeat dad, well, wasn't he never supposed to be the dad? Yeah, and then she's like, oh my god, I don't like this cousin person, because she's sharing notes from, like, the kid saying that her mom is the best, and I just, mm. Something I, feels icky. This is, I, why are they, none of them, I hate all of them, get them all off social media. <laughs> right she's hashtagging justice for maria like i can't i don't even want not the going live on tiktok in 20 to 30 minutes oh god okay the, uh rug girl <laughs> <laughs> i honestly um don't care to look further into it all i think is that this is the messiest shit ever and i think that he came to social media about it because he wanted to be public with his girlfriend and knew that like yeah. something would come out about him being yeah a sperm donor, quote unquote, whatever the fuck this is. And I think that all in all, that little girl doesn't deserve this. This is so fucking messy. Everybody log off for the night. Do me a favor. For the yeah, foreseeable Log future. off and forget your password. <laughs> Do us all a favor. Um, That's pretty much it. Is that not the fucking, like no resolution, just everybody a hot fucking mess, adults running amok on social media. I love it. And that's, and everyone coming out, uh, I just, I, I know we've been in some messy online situations, but there's not children involved. No. And come on. No. If I'm ever this, this is messy you can literally you know like those uh shows where they carry them off with a cane you could come to my house and do that <laughs> like please i cannot we are too shows over this. folks <laughs> well no i've said that always i'm like literally I, I, even earlier i said during the i'm so tired and i'm scared to be tired blah, blah. if i posted an embarrassing selfie someone i know someone i barely know would be like lily we, no we absolutely need to. <laughs> yeah you need to wrap it up someone unplug the internet anyway we love the internet to uh, wrap Jesus. this fucking Do shit we? show of an episode up. No, we don't. Yeah. We don't. But you know, it is what it is. Okay, mine is going to be an animal one. Not Yay. your typical one, <laughs> no. as usual. <laughs> it's something actually that I need to explore uh, utilizing with my cat, Jasmine, because putting a camera on a cat that escapes seems so funny to me. And oh, this I is, oh yeah, no, these are so interesting. It says, I put a camera on the cat to see what he does when he goes out. They get it's, up to all kinds of shit. Oh, quick little feet. Oh. 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 Ah! Ah! The bullying is insane. You do not understand the lengths this cat goes to to find that cat. She has some unfinished business. <laughs> Just, he literally had a hit on him. Oh my god, what? And he lost him too. That motherfucker was shifty. Listen to the breathing. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> oh my god he never finds him how does he know where he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't know where he is he's looking for him good <laughs> oh my god how does he even know where to be looking he seems like he he's starts getting so it. tired and exasperated at this point me <laughs> when i saw this i'm like 
What did that cat do to you that you ran up Jesus. on that? Jesus. Yeah, he went straight to him. It wasn't like, oh, we're going to lounge around. We're going to scope out the... No, no, Straight literally, for him. A comment. Bro said it's on site. Like, literally <laughs> had a hit on him, just followed him, took care of business, lost him. But uh, I think he'll find him eventually. He's What's like, so interesting is that really does give you a little insight into, like, they know... Like, oh, yeah. They know each they other. They have their own <laughs> little relationships. They they can... Rem- uh, yeah. it's, mm, wow. They do. Oh, my God. Literally no conversation was exchanged. Just straight fucking punches. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was... That was insane. They're kind of like animal ones that are going to make me cry. No. <laughs> but they're sweet. Not but, not like, like sad ones. Are you actually we'll going to cry? No. Maybe because it's just so cute. You're like, I can't make any promises. It says, on November 6th, this little girl was born lifeless. It's a little tiny black lab puppy. After 10 minutes of CPR, she finally took a slow, fragile breath. She was too cold to eat. We rushed her to the emergency vet. Oh my god, look, what a contraption She's like in a little, in? like... Oh, like oxygen thing i don't know lily i'm gonna freaking jump off a cliff it what gets are better you doing? and then it says we were told she wouldn't survive because her body temperature was so low but her mother refused to give up gently licking her warm and bring her strength and there's like a bunch of other puppies there too it says and the little girl took her first sips of mom's milk uh... she did a little tiny thing it says since the other puppies kept pushing her away we slept in shifts to make sure she was fed we cared for her so much oh my god she's so small the dog i can't pronounce the dog's name because i feel like it's not how it's spelled but it's it's like a H-J-O and it has like the two dots on top, R-D-I-S. But um, it says, by some miracle, she started gaining weight and they show her and she's like in like a in food a bowl wear. on a freaking food scale. She's so tiny. And when we saw the connection between them, we knew we couldn't separate them. So they gave away all the other puppies, but then they kept this one and oh it just shows them God. growing up together. So we decided on keeping her and it's so cute. And named her Princess Ava. And from this day on, I don't know how to say it, the, the mom had a best friend. And then it just shows them growing up together and it's the oh sweetest thing we've God, ever seen. Oh my God, I can't deal there. with this. Look are you them. joking? Look at them. Oh my God. Look at they them. They have matching hats. hats. That is something else. And I know it's... Dude, I am... I'm going to cry. It's pretty common, like, when you have litters, that one will be maybe not born or it's just so oh my god that was so sweet oh, they kept her and then she got to grow up with her mom oh my god i love it so much it's so cute well what the fuck was this episode <laughs> i don't fucking know but can we be done <laughs> yes we can and you guys can be done too. i truly got hot We're i haven't had a drink you. for the, at least a half hour if you guys made it to the end you deserve an award for this one sorry uh we'll do better next time <laughs> We appreciate you guys uh, watching. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. And as always, we will see you on Friday. Bye. Cheers with nothing. Bye.